I'm Paul Mackey, leaning into the final days of the dog days of trivia. It's actually day 20 of the dog days of podcasting. I've made the return from Madison, Wisconsin with my daughter Iris. Today was pretty much all about the driving with a little shoe shopping right there at the beginning. We had a fantastic time with my sister and her wife. Now I'm back at Measure for Measure on 4th Street in Duluth, Minnesota, and back with my main setup where I don't have to be on camera. In fact, other than that laptop, I don't actually have a camera at all. So let's have a look at the answers to yesterday's challenge. First category was Terry Garr and Martin Mull totally did it in the 80s. Number one, there's an animated honeybee in front of you insisting he's going to tempt your tummy with the taste of nuts and honey. What product is a honey of an O? And the answer, of course, is Honey Nut Cheerios. Number two. In the 1980s, Wendy's hamburger restaurants had a series of ads starring Clara Peller asking what now timeless catchphrase question. The answer is, where's the beef? Number three. No, it's not your desperate buddy at the club at closing time. What product is the quicker picker-upper? The answer is, bounty paper towels. Number four. Most recently, Peter Billingsley directed the film Term Life, but in the 1980s, along with trying not to shoot his eye out, he played the commercial character Messy Marvin, who successfully made chocolate milk without making a mess thanks to what product? The answer is Hershey's Chocolate Syrup. Number five. Sure, there's a company called Pizza Pizza in Canada, but what U.S. company started to use the phrase as their slogan, though the two companies are entirely unaffiliated, and that answer is Little Caesars. Lastly, number six. Let's take a geographic test. This question has two answers depending on where you live. For mayonnaise, you bring out the what and bring out the best. The answer is possibly Hellman's mayonnaise, which is if you live in the eastern U.S., Canada, Latin America, Europe, or the Middle East, or otherwise, Best Foods, which is Western U.S., Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. And last, the category name, Terry Garr and Martin Mull totally did it in the 80s. What did they do? They played ad executives in 1983's Mr. Mom. Second category, somewhat linked, is called Fever Pitch. Number one. Billy Mays was the star of his own reality TV series, Pitchman, prior to his death in 2009. What product was he best known for selling? The answer, OxyClean. Number two, Ernest P. Worrell was in a series of movies in the 1980s, but before these thin plots, he was a pitch character. He first became known for regional spots, especially regional dairies, and he eventually pitched for Taco John's and Coca-Cola nationally. What's the name of the actor? known for playing Ernest? And that answer is the late Jim Varney. Number three. Hallie Eisenberg is Jesse Eisenberg's younger sister, but in the late 90s, she was in a series of ads in which she played a little girl who spoke with the voices of Aretha Franklin, Isaac Hayes, and Joe Pesci, among others. What product was this curly-haired pitch girl pitching? The answer is Pepsi. Number four. O.J. Simpson was a famous football running back with the Buffalo Bills, but for a kid watching TV, he was also famous as that guy running through the airports in a series of commercials for what car rental agency? The answer is Hertz. Number five. In a commercial popularly known under the title Hey Kid Catch, the Pittsburgh Steelers' mean Joe Green trades a bottle of beverage for his jersey with a kid after the game. What drink is apparently good enough to trade for game-worn apparel? And the answer is Coca-Cola. Number six, Victor Kayam made his fortune in a successful and well-known electric shaver company. As he famously said as the commercial spokesman, he liked the shaver so much, he bought the company. What shaver was he selling? And the answer is the Remington Microscreen. Okay, so we're going to wrap up the dog days of trivia as I return closer to live releases with something a bit different. Along with writing for Atomic Trivia War 9000, I also submitted three questions to the BBC for potential use on the Round Britain quiz. Two of the questions made it to air, each after being revised and improved by their team of trivia professionals. The third was not selected at all. 
I do not have their revisions close at hand, so I'm giving you one of my questions in its original all Paul Mackey condition. If you aren't aware, a Round Britain quiz question includes six components you need to identify and or explain. In the actual competition, the host sometimes aids with hints and tips, and the team's score is docked based on how much aid they received. I won't be able to aid you, so the scoring is up to you. And remember, the points totally matter, if you want them to. All right, so the question. Calvin Broadus Jr. is sipping gin and juice. A percussive banshee has some candy, which Annabella says she wants. Yusuf Islam is having tea. Which synth-pop act might enclose them all, and why is Brian Setzer not among them? So, good luck finding those answers, and happy hunting! You have been listening to the One Idget's Thoughts on podcast, produced by Paul Mackey in association with QuadrupleZ.com. Theme music is Too Good by Jack Mangan, and is used by permission from him. If you would like to hear other podcasts by me, you might try The Ghostlight Podcast, a completed intro cast about the TV series Slings and Arrows, or Idget Cast, an intro cast for the TV series Supernatural. Both can be found on fine podcasting listening software everywhere or at quadruplez.com. Love is tough, but so are we.